Welcome to the F5 Networks, Advanced Web Application Firewall, Demo and Exercise Series. In this demo, we'll show how to use WebSocket protection, with Big IP Advanced WEF. This is an exercise, which represents Demo 45 of the AWEF Demo Series, and it's intended for Advanced Level Big IP Advanced WEF users. For optimal viewing, we recommend using full screen mode. The environment for this demo contains three devices. A Windows workstation will be used to submit WebSocket messages to the web application. These requests will arrive at the F5 Big IP system, running Advanced WEF. The Big IP system sits in front of the WebSocket web application. The Big IP system, using its full proxy architecture, examines every request before sending them to the WebSocket web application. Through this process, Big IP Advanced WEF can begin creating a web application security policy. We have already created a pool, pointing to an external, WebSocket web application, and a virtual server using this pool. We'll start by creating a Big IP Advanced WEF security policy, for the virtual server. We'll give the policy a name. Select the comprehensive template type and the virtual server we are protecting. In addition, we'll specify the web application language and set the learning speed to fast. We'll now access the learning and blocking settings page and then expand the URL section. Notice that the Learn New WebSocket URLs option is set to Always. This is because we selected the comprehensive policy template. In addition, there are several violations regarding WebSocket URLs. Binary content found in text-only WebSocket. Illegal WebSocket binary message length. Illegal WebSocket extension. Illegal WebSocket frame length and text content found in binary-only WebSocket. These options are also selected because we used the comprehensive policy template. Next, we'll expand the WebSocket protocol compliance section. There are additional violations regarding the WebSocket protocol. We'll now open Chrome. and access the WebSocket Echo Test website. We can use this website to test sending WebSocket messages back and forth, between a client, and a server. Just a note, the Windows workstation contains a host sentry, that points the host name WebSocket.org, to the virtual server IP address. First, we'll click the Connect button, to open a session. Let's examine this request in the Big IP Advanced WEF event log. First, we'll customize the left panel that displays the log entries. We'll change the third entry in the left column to WebSocket message type. We'll then add a fourth entry in the left column for WebSocket message direction. We can now see there are two WebSocket message types. First is a handshake message, and next is the Pong message. This identifies the WebSocket Keep Alive, which will continue while the web page is open. Let's select the handshake log entry, and then examine the request section. This is the only WebSocket message type, with an HTTP request, and response. Next, we'll select the Pong log entry. The message direction is client, to server. Notice there is no HTTP request details. Next, we'll enter some text into the message field. And then click send. We'll reload the event log. 
and examine the new log entry. This is a textual message type. And also, notice you can view the WebSocket client message value. Finally, we'll disconnect the WebSocket session. And then view the new log entry. This new log entry is a close message type. From client to server. Next, let's examine the traffic learning page. Notice there is an add WebSocket URL suggestion for the root slash URL. When we select it, you can see that the action is to add this as a WS WebSocket URL. We'll accept this suggestion and leave it in staging. We'll also select these two add valid host name suggestions and accept them as well. Let's open the allowed WebSocket URLs page. And we can see the new entry for the root slash WebSocket URL. We'll select it to view the configuration options. On the message handling tab, we'll select to enable checking the message payload. Notice that the plain text message payload format is allowed, but grayed out. We'll cancel this manual change, as instead, we'll have the policy builder learn this from user requests. We'll now apply the policy. We'll now reconnect and submit a text message. Then resubmit the request several times. And then disconnect. We'll then open the traffic learning page again. There is a new suggestion to classify the URL content. The action is to set the classification for this WebSocket URL to disabled, and although we can't see the entire value, the second action is to set the WebSocket text message format to allowed. We'll accept this suggestion. Let's open the allowed WebSocket URLs page again and select the WebSocket URL. Notice that check message payload is now enabled for the plain text message payload format. Also notice that the plain text format is using the default payload enforcement profile. Next, we'll examine and modify the default plain text profile. This profile specifies maximum length values and also specifies which attack signatures are enabled. We can use the value meta characters tab to specify which keyboard characters are allowed and which are disallowed. We'll select the exclamation point and then select to disallow it. We'll update the profile and then apply the policy. We'll reconnect and then submit text that includes an exclamation point. Although we entered an illegal character, we weren't blocked. Do you know why? We'll reload the event log and select the new log entry. Notice it has a violation rating of 1. It also triggered the illegal meta character in value violation. We'll return to the allowed WebSocket URLs page and then enforce the root slash URL. We'll reconnect once more and then resubmit the text which contains the exclamation point. Notice that there was no server response and that the WebSocket session was immediately disconnected. When we open the event log, you can see there's now a blocked textual log entry.
will now copy a cross-site script string and attempt to submit this value in the WebSocket message. Again, there is no server response, and the WebSocket session was immediately disconnected. We now have another blocked log entry. Due to two detected attack signatures, the Big IP Advanced WEF Security Policy can identify attack signatures contained within WebSocket messages. Notice that the event log highlights the malicious text within the WebSocket client message section. Thank you for watching this exercise on using WebSocket protection with F5 Big IP Advanced WEF. We encourage you to watch additional AWEF demos and exercises, and for more details on how Advanced WEF can protect your web applications, contact your F5 Networks Sales Account Manager. For questions or comments about this video, contact Chris Manley at the email address at the bottom of the page.